have hypothyroidism, one of the things that can take a pretty big hit and have an impact is our blood sugar. So I wanted to review a few reasons why this can happen and then give you a few tips on things you can do to kind of help keep your blood sugar balanced. But if you could do me a very big favor, if you could go ahead and subscribe to my channel and then hit that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video. So one of the very common things that I see with clients all the time is blood sugar dysregulation. And um, it can definitely happen when we have hypothyroidism. So a big reason why this can happen is because anytime we have thyroid disease, and that can go for Hashimoto's, it can be hypothyroidism, it can be even overactive thyroid, um, your adrenals are so closely connected to your thyroid. So your adrenals can actually take a pretty big hit. Now, sometimes our adrenals will go into overdrive um, and release too much cortisol, and then it can become chronic where over time our adrenals can't keep up with that demand and then they're not releasing enough cortisol. But the connection with blood sugar is any time that our blood sugar dips down, your adrenals have to release cortisol because one of the things that cortisol will do, it, remember this is your fight or flight and your stress hormone, one of the things it will do is it will pull glucose out of your cells and put it into your blood. It will try to bring your blood sugar up. Now, when we have thyroid disease, that can become a very, very big challenge. And that's why when we have thyroid disease, it because our adrenals have taken such a hit and they are so closely impacted and sometimes just don't respond the way that they should, they don't have enough energy or enough oomph to actually release cortisol anymore, it won't get your blood sugar to do what it's supposed to do. And so it becomes dysregulated and that's why we can have blood sugar going up and down and kind of all over the place and it's because the thyroid is so, like I mentioned, so closely connected to your adrenals. And if the adrenals are imbalanced and, and sometimes we'll get into a pattern where you're releasing too much, then too little, and it's kind of all over the place and it's very dysregulated, it will not keep your blood sugar under control. And so that's why when I work with clients, I always, always am addressing the adrenals at the same time that we're doing the thyroid since they are so closely connected and the blood sugar can take such a hit and it can be running too high, it can be running too low, it can kind of go all over the place and up and down and it simply is because we, it's very hard to keep it under control when we have a dysregulation in our adrenals and our cortisol pattern. Remember, cortisol is our fight or flight hormone. So it rises in the morning because it wakes you up, it spikes mid-morning, by the afternoon it's supposed to dip down and then by the evening it's supposed to be completely low because that is your time to sleep. And so cortisol does the opposite of melatonin at nighttime. Then cortisol goes down, melatonin goes up. That's what makes you sleep. And then when you wake up in the morning, what's waking you up is your cortisol. Cortisol is rising, it's waking you up, and melatonin has gone back down. That can become very dysregulated with thyroid disease. And when that happens, your blood sugar probably will do the exact same thing then because your body can't necessarily adapt because there's not enough cortisol to be doing what it's supposed to be doing or it becomes too high and then your body's trying to bring it back down um, and so it's hard to manage that so some things that you can do right now that will actually help to keep your blood sugar balanced and in turn will help your thyroid and your adrenals is always start with eating breakfast when we skip breakfast especially with thyroid disease your blood sugar dips really low if your blood sugar is already dysregulated because you have thyroid disease and you have adrenal dysfunction when we skip breakfast it's going to make a very big challenge for your adrenals to actually bring the blood sugar back up because they don't have enough of that to be able to do that. So eat your breakfast, make sure your meals are always balanced though. Carbohydrate, protein, and fat. If we eat too much, I'll say sugar, even if it's natural sugar, but if it's too much carbohydrate and you don't have enough protein and fat to offset that, your blood sugar will spike and then it's gonna drop and it's gonna dip pretty low. And then we ens will ensue, we'll have to bring your blood sugar back up because it's too low. And if you don't have the cortisol again, that's when things like insulin resistance can happen because your body's like, I can't keep up with this anymore. So that's why you have to make sure that you're doing carbohydrate, protein, and fat at all your meals, definitely at breakfast. Um, and try to avoid having really, really high sugar or sweets, things like that at bedtime. And that's always a time where a lot of people are like, oh, I just need a little treat. And so they'll have like sugar or something like that. And remember, cortisol is already dipping. You don't want cortisol to go up. It will have to be released and go up to manage that blood sugar stuff. So let's try to avoid sugars and sweets at bedtime. Um, try to limit your caffeine as much as you can. I know that's easier said than done, especially when we have thyroid disease or adrenal dysfunction, but try to eliminate your caffeine as much as you can because that will also help your adrenals so that your blood sugar stays regulated. Um, eating, even your snacks that you eat, make sure it's protein and fat 
um, and it could have carbohydrates, but don't eat those carbs alone, even at a snack. You want to make sure it has protein and fat with it. And make sure, especially if you are really struggling with thyroid disease and adrenal dysfunction, make sure that you are eating often enough. So if you're going, you know, six to eight hours without eating, that's going to be too difficult on your thyroid and your adrenals. So just make sure that you are including carbohydrate, protein, and fat at the meals, but also make sure that um, you also are making sure that you're eating often enough. So if you're going too long without food, that can make it a really big challenge as well. So two to three hours around dish is about the right time for people who are struggling with thyroid and adrenal disease. Um, try to avoid um, fasting for too long. That goes without saying. We talked about how, like when you get up in the morning, have your breakfast right away and make sure you're spacing your meals um, enough, but don't go too far. Um, that can help as well. Avoid inflammatory foods too. Gluten, sugar, soy, things like that. They can make it a really hard challenge um, on our blood sugar as well. So make sure you're trying to avoid those things um, that can uh, be super helpful as well. So these are some of my big tips that have helped me personally. It's what I recommend for my clients to try to get their, keep their blood sugar under control, which will in the end help nourish their thyroid, the adrenals. If you have any questions about this, reach out to me. Let me know if anything comes up and you have more questions with us and I will see you on the next video. Bye.